Well, if you're having problems with infertility, menopause, fibroids, all kinds of problems and challenges that women have, today's program is especially for you. My host today has a first degree in medicine from the University of Benin, that's in Edo State, the south, south region of Nigeria. She completed her residency program at the University College Hospital in Ibadan, that's in Oyo State, the southwest of Nigeria, obtained her fellowship in 2009 and so is addressed as a fellow of the West African College of Surgeons. She's worked extensively in in vitro fertilization in the last three years and that's why I have her here today to guide us through all those challenges that women face as they grow older. Well, hello and welcome. This is 60 Minutes with me, Angela Jitumobi, and I thank you for joining me on the program today. Now, today is our health program. We're looking at fibroids, menopause, infertility, the causes of infertility, and when can we say a person is infertile? And when can one say that it is impossible to have children? My host today says most of the things that we know about women's health are mostly myths. So join me after the break. I'm counting down 60 minutes with Dr. Omotayo Oluede. She's a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist. Welcome back and welcome, Dr. Oluide. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Right. Now, let's start with this. I got a question from a viewer. Um, my last health program was with an oncologist specialist in cervical cancer. And so she sent me a question asking me to look at Asherman syndrome. Um, it looks like she's going through that. So I just wanted to start with that for her benefit and benefit of those who don't know what Asherman syndrome is. What is it and is it something that is curable? Asherman syndrome simply describes a situation in which um, a woman has um, what we call adhesions within the lining of the womb. It's essentially damage to the lining of the womb which is where the embryo Right. In plants. Right. And um, the. Um, what, what causes those lesions? Yes, it can be usually due to um, surgical trauma mm -hmm. and it, it may follow um, infections right. that affect the lining of the womb. Right. Now, it is still possible for somebody who has Asherman syndrome to achieve pregnancy, but the woman uh, will need to have um, corrective surgery. Right. Um, to the lining of the womb, mm -hmm. to some therapy, mm -hmm. um, drug therapy, mm -hmm. to be able to grow back the lining of the womb, and hopefully, and um, the woman will be able to get pregnant. Okay, so it's the lining of the womb can be replaced, can be repaired, repaired. Okay, through like regeneration. Yeah, the, the essentially what the um, surgeon would do is yes. to try and remove the scar tissue right. that um, has formed mm -hmm. possibly as a result of trauma to the lining of the womb mm -hmm. and then um, tr give the woman um, some time mm -hmm. uh, give her um, some drugs mm -hmm. which may help 
to regrow the lining of the womb. And there are different degrees of, um, of this. You, you, in the severe cases, the mm. prognosis is, is guided. Right. So the woman may still have problems um, mm. conceiving naturally. Mm -hmm. They need to have assisted conception. And so in the severe cases, the prognosis is usually guided. It depends on the degree of... Um, on how bad the damage is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you say it's caused by infection or trauma to the lining, what kind of trauma can the lining have in there that will make it okay. injured? It may follow evacuation of the womb, following okay. maybe a miscarriage. Infection, for example, a woman who has broken her water for a long time before delivery and is not yeah. properly treated, yes. it may result in those kind of um, additions. Now, can you have fibroids and still get pregnant? Yes, you can have fibroids and still get pregnant. Okay. Is it true that fibroids are nature's way of mimicking pregnancy in women? You know, the myth out there is that um, when women delay having children, fibroids come to remind you that this is the reason why you have a uterus. <laughs> well, that's funny really, <laughs> but in a way they are correct in the sense that uh, fibroids tend to be commoner in women who have not had children. Right. Um, women who do have children do have fibroids and As well. they do get pregnant. Yes. Uh, but it tends to be commoner in women who have not given birth. Okay. The, you said they can still have children. Yes, it depends. Now, for fibroids, really, are not a cause of infertility because right. we see pregnant women with fibroids all the time. Right. But then it, um, it depends on how big they are. Mm -hmm. Some can grow so big, there's no space for the baby to stay in the womb. Some can be there and they don't cause any any problem. So as a cause of infertility, it's not strictly true, mm -hmm. but it may contribute to the inability to get pregnant mm -hmm. or carry a pregnancy to term, mm -hmm. depending on the positioning and the size. And the size, because it, it, it may squash the baby up in there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. I like to be graphic, Dr. <laughs> okay. okay, so what, why, do, why is it that some people are scared to remove fibroids. There is a tendency out there to think that when you have fibroid surgery, you will die. It's like, you know, a fait accompli. Going for fibroid surgery equals death. Well, I won't say the affairs are unfounded. There have been some even high profile cases of people who had malmetomy. Yes. And um, the cause of death is usually due to hemorrhage. Um, bleeding during surgery. Okay. Um, usually if um, malmectomy is being done by an expert, you mm. are supposed to prepare mm. for that. Yeah. They can uh, bleed mm. depending on the size. The bigger it is, yes. the more difficult it is to control the bleeding mm. um, during surgery. But a good surgeon is prepared for that yes. and in some instances if you cannot control bleeding yes. you may need to remove um, the, the uterus but there are um, ways of dealing with bleeding mm. uh, during malmectomy what um, any individual needs to be sure of is that you are seeing an expert in the field the more information you have you can mm. ask your doctors oh uh, I'm worried about bleeding and mm. all that and your doctor can lay your fears yes. and can even tell you, okay, these are the things we do to ensure that um, people may need transfusion yeah. and drugs that help with uh, clotting to mm. help. So the essential thing is to be prepared right. and I think um, women need to arm themselves with information. The more information you have, you are able to um, go to the right place right. Um, to seek um, treatment. Yes, bleeding is one of the uh, complications, but a, a gynecologist yes. who is a specialist in the field is usually prepared for that and can take care of that. When would a fibroid be inoperable? Yes, in certain cases, yes. you may need to go for a hysterectomy right. um, because of the huge size of the fibroids. The mm. bigger it is, 
the more um, bleeding you will, you will encounter. Mm. It all boils down to assessment before right. surgery. Um, you need to assess and counsel the woman uh, appropriately. Right. Yes, yeah, sometimes, depending on your judgment, you may think that, okay, it's safer uh, to just remove the womb. Yes, but than to try you have had Especially to if the whole of the, uh, of, the, of the uterus is taken up by the fibers, which brings me to the point that early presentation yes. we usually um, save your uterus. Yes. I mean, if the tumor is really a tumor, it's yeah. a benign tumor, though most of the time, um, has grown so big, yes. the safest thing might be to just remove, especially if there's no LD uterine tissue. When you say early detection is the key, how, how can anyone detect fibroids in there? Yes, most of the time, yes. um, you don't even know it is there because most of the time it causes no problem, it's asymptomatic. But for women in the reproductive age yes. group, um, especially it comes up really when you are investigating for infertility. The woman oh. has a pelvis scan as part of her um, investigations. Mm. And then, so sometimes there's nothing to worry about. Sometimes the woman, you may advise, is better to remove it. There are indications for surgery right. um, when a woman has um, uterine fibers and one of the things is, is it causing a, a heavy bleeding during mm. her menses which may lead to anemia and sometimes if the anemia goes untreated heart failure. Also the size, as it grows bigger it can compress structures beside it. For example, the tube that carries urine from your kidney to your bladder yes. can be compressed and it may cause problems with the kidney. So there are indications for the remover. I've heard this a lot of times um, from um, those who sell um, herbal medicine. Can you melt fibroids and pass it out in feces when you go to the toilet? No. It's not melted, it's not dissolvable. No, no, no. <laughs> I must say that surgery is not only the alternative to right. treating fibroids. There are newer methods that avoid surgery, but they are not for everybody. Right. For example, a woman who, has, who is no longer interested in having children mm. does not necessarily need to have a hysterectomy to have her fibroids treated. There are uh, things like um, uterine artery embolization, uh, which in layman's language is to block the blood vessels that feed the uterus. And so you are starving the fibroids of nutrient and mm. they may shrink over time. Okay, that's what, what when you say they're shrinking it. Yeah. Mm. yeah that's, that's the logic. Yes. It's a surgical intervention too, but not open surgery. Right. It's right. Mm. Right. Okay, so the, you, you, you put the person to sleep. Yes, you still oh. need to put the person to sleep to okay. do that. Can laparoscopy be used to remove fibroids? Yes. That's so also, but that's surgery too. That, too that's, okay. that's surgical. But um, laparoscopy is better than open surgery in the sense that um, your recovery time is shorter. I mean, if you are not opening up the person, yes, yes, who really. is less. But then there are strict criteria for um, choosing to remove fibroids through laparoscopy. Okay. They're usually smaller and less in number. There is a size to which a fibroid will grow that laparoscopic surgery is no longer uh, appropriate. But okay. it is better than open surgery for those in whom it is indicated for. Now, let's talk about menopause. Do you advise medication to um, control the symptoms and effects of menopause? I can't give you a straight yes or no. Yeah. Um, usually, we do not um, recommend medication because the medications do have um, their own side effects. But the symptoms of menopause affect women differently. Um, not everybody will feel all the symptoms and mm. not everybody will um, experience it to the same degree. Mm -hmm. For those women in which these symptoms is affecting their ability to function, right. you may want to consider using medication at the lowest possible dose, lowest effective dose, mm. as well as for the shortest um, possible time to help them go through the transition. In other words, the medical, the medical field doesn't consider menopause to be an illness. No, it is not an illness. It's a okay. natural 
occurrence and, and that every woman will, will go through. So every woman should learn to embrace it, exactly. so to speak. So the key is to get information right. and to know um, what to expect mm -hmm. and to un know that there are some symptoms you can get relief mm -hmm. from, not necessarily medication. You may need to modify your lifestyle. Right. In mm. what way? Yes. For example, one of the commonest symptoms is these hot flushes or flashes that yes. women feel. And it yes. can be very distressing yes. if you don't understand what is um, happening. happening. Yeah. What is happening yes. um, is essentially um, a sudden rise in the body temperature because of the fluctuating level of hormones. Mm. It occurs really before you actually get to the menopause, right. what we call the perimenopause. Right. You are approaching menopause. Mm. So because the ovaries are releasing fluctuating levels of hormones, mm. you tend to have a sort of um, instability mm. um, in, the, in what we call the vasomotor response. So there can be a sudden rise in the body temperature. Right. And then the inability of the body to regulate the temperature to normal mm. on time, you now feel this hot flush. In fact, it can be so bad that the woman feels weak, she suddenly breaks out in sweat. Yes. And you know, that can be alarming mm. if you don't understand mm -hmm. what, what is happening. You may actually think there's something wrong with you, yeah. something serious. <laughs> so, but you can, yes, drugs can be prescribed for women who really can cope. Mm. Um, what we call hormone replacement therapy may help with it. Yeah. But then you can do some lifestyle modifications. You don't wear tight clothing. Mm -hmm. You learn to wear clothing that you can easily remove. Stay in cool places. Okay. Try to find yourself uh, when that occurs. Drink mm -hmm. a lot of cold drinks to, yes, to cool yourself down. Mm -hmm. In that perimenopausal period, before the full menopause comes, yeah. can a woman still get pregnant? Yes, it is possible for a woman to get pregnant, but compared to um, the reproductive years, the chances are reduced. Right. Because a woman still overlates, it's just that it's not regular. Right. So the possibility of pregnancy is still there. It's not zero. Right. It, it's now zero after you've ever achieved menopause. Okay. That uh, is true natural means. So it's, it's still possible, mm. but the chances are very much reduced. All right, so we'll take our first break now. Join us again after the break. Who knows Abi better thing? Abi who know like better thing? Ha. Ah. Hmm. All these fine fine things where they see so. Now money go men they take do and now. Abi, I say, it's like, you know, I mean, excuse me, I did pay my tax. I did do a thing, I did pay my tax. Say you don't pay your own tax. If you pay your tax, pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. back if you've just joined us it's 60 minutes with me Angela Jitumobi and on my hot seat today Dr. Omotai Oluede consultant obstetrician and gynecologist now we're talking about menopause yes. before we went on the break can a woman of 18 or 19 go into menopause extremely rare but it is possible there's some um, group of women who have what we call premature ovarian failure. Mm. Um, premature menopause is menopause that occurs before the age of 40. Right. Um, some women are born with abnormal ovaries that mm. um, are not functioning properly. Such women can go into menopause earlier. And also women who have had surgery and had their ovaries removed what we call surgical menopause. Right. Can go into menopause before they are middle. So ages. when when the ovaries are removed, menopause will come on. It's sudden. There is no transition for such women. You do it's you remove the ovaries remove today, the, the yes, next day. Yes, they are they're already in menopause. They don't have the chance to go through that transition. Yes. It's sudden. So they start feeling all those symptoms mm. and in such women, these hot flushes tend to be 
very bad. Very and you may need to really um, give. They are also prone to osteoporosis too, which is brittle bones, yes. and fractures of the spine. You know? Why? Because it started too suddenly. Yes. If one has passed this perimenopausal stage and now it's full menopause, how will you know you are fully in menopause? Menopause is a retrospective diagnosis. Let me use that word. A woman can be said to have been to have achieved menopause when she has um, not seen her monthly periods yeah. for twelve months uninterrupted. Yes. The menopause is yes. a date actually. The yeah. date of the last menses is the menopause. So you now move into the post-menopausal stage. So if from the date of your last menses, um, you've been going along six months, you have another period, you are still not in menopause? Yes, those are symptoms of the perimenopause. Okay. They, they have skipped periods. Any spotting that yeah. may occur, no matter how long or um, how short, how short cycle length is, you do have a lot of irregularities in the period during the perimenopause. Yes. You may even have a two-week interval between cycles, mm -hmm. and it may be longer than that. The flow may be spotty or heavier mm -hmm. or normal. The woman needs to note the pattern of bleeding, which can be worrisome, really, yes. and then discuss with your gynecologist. Once you have had that 12 months of uninterrupted mm. Um, absence of menses, any bleeding after that should be investigated to rule out um, um, causes that may be due to cancer. At that stage, when you've said it's uninterrupted for 12 months, can a woman still get pregnant? Because we hear of women in their 50s and so on who still get pregnant and go on to have babies. Well, it's extremely rare. Um, it's possible there have been uh, reported incidences of postmenopausal pregnancies, but right. it's extremely rare. Would it be engineered by the medical, by a medical team? No, it's, extre I, I, it's extremely rare, but through assisted um, reproductive techniques, it is possible for a woman who has achieved menopause to achieve pregnancy mm -hmm. through the use of, of course, donated eggs. Why? Because when menopause has started, after that 12 months, it means you don't have eggs again. No. The yeah. eggs are depleted in number and, of course, in quality too. Why do they say in quality? What do you mean by quality? Is it that they're not young again because you, you are not young? Exactly. To put it simply, you're okay. as old as your eggs. Ah, okay. So it will be a 50-year-old egg. Let's yes, put it that yes. Way. And with age, um, there's, if we want to go um, to the molecular level now, yes. um, what happens is that in the what we call oocytes, the eggs in the ovary, yes, um, there's what is called um, DNA, which is the nuclear material that directs cell division yes. in the cell. Now they undergo damage. When you are younger, the body is able to correct these damages. Yes. But as a person gets older, this repair is not possible. And that happens also in the ovary. So that's mm -hmm. what we mean by quality. Okay, so can we then take it to be as a fact that children who are born to women who have perhaps achieved menopause or in their 50s who are menopausal, they will be deficient in some way? Um, well, I won't put it that way. Yes. Um, but there is a high probability of chromosomal abnormalities right. in these children. For example, the commonest yes. um, Down syndrome, the um, risk of giving birth to a child with that um, uh, deformity increases with age. From age 40, right. the incidence is higher the older the woman. Is, that is, supposing she uses, I mean, she um, gets pregnant through natural means and okay. not through in vitro fertilization in which she has a donated um, egg. egg. I, I mean, what are the risks with this donated egg? Uh, you know, uh, can, does your body just accept an egg from somebody else, not a blood relation? Yes. Um, the woman will be given some drugs 
to right. enhance our body to receive this um, and accept it. Yes. So it's not straightforward like that no, when you hear egg donation. No, it's not straightforward like that. I'm sure you've heard all these stories about baby making factories and so on. Do you think it's time for the government to consider regulating the business of surrogacy so that that's an option for all these women that are getting scammed in these baby making factories yes i think um it's about time that um, do we have surrogacy in nigeria yes we do but it's at this level there are no laws there are really no regulations mm -hmm. and People do, just do, do people do it openly or, or no people don't do it openly they right. don't they don't do it openly um, why is there stigma attached well because of the old stigma attached to infertility itself mm. the woman who has not been able to have her own children uh, is stigmatized mm. in our society so yes. this lack of um, openness gives mm. room to a lot of shady shadiness and yes. this because so I think it's about time that the relevant bodies um, wake up to their mm. responsibility and regulate. Because when there are no laws, anything, anything goes. goes. Who's to blame for infertility? Is it the woman or the man? Um, infertility is a couple's problem. Research has found that, that half of the problem mm -hmm. is from the woman, also an equal Oh. It's from the man, <laughs> and there's some, well, they say 40%, 40%, there's a 20% yes. that is both of them, and sometimes it's unexplained, it's nobody's fault, really. But mm. we want to think of it as a couple, is a couple's problem. How can you state categorically that this person is infertile? You want to take a good history, you want to um, take their um, gynecological history, and in some instances, obstetric history too, yes. the past obstetric history, and then you want to examine them and then run some investigations before you can say, okay, you are infertile and you mm. will need assisted um, reproductive uh, techniques, which is not only IVF. How long is it normal to have been trying for a baby before a couple should start to panic that? Okay. You know, this baby isn't coming. Yes, the couple must have um, lived together right. um, for a year. And um, they must have intercourse an average of three times a week. So are you for saying if they don't live together but they're having the same intercourse, does that... Well, I, we, 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 they must go have it. Right. Otherwise, you, you can't say oh. for sure because a woman can ovulate any time in the menstrual cycle. Right. So we think that an average of three times a week, instead of saying just having tacos around the ovulation period, yes. um, increases the chance of achieving uh, pregnancy. Right. However, now depending on the age of the woman, mm -hmm. which is very, very important, the management of infertility, if the woman is um, above 35, yes. you, you won't want to use that definition of um, after one year of not being on contraception, mm. um, having adequate intercourse, then and, with, and nothing is happening, then they should seek help. But if the woman is older than 35, yes. it is um, advisable to seek help earlier, preferably after six months. Because from that age, um, women tend to have problems Conceiving. So you are over 35, you've been trying for six months, you're 25, you've been trying for a year, it's time to see a doctor. Yes. Do you see the doctor alone? It's advisable for the couple. To come together. Yes, because you really need to see the two to be able to know exactly what the problem is. So you don't just treat the woman. Yes, yes. And with, uh, ignore the man. Yeah. In, in, in your practice, do you find that the men are reluctant. I'm asking this because I've read, you know, many letters in papers and, you know, tabloids where the man equates ejaculation with the fact that he can, you know, he is fertile. No, it is, it's not the same. Yes. Uh, the ejaculate is made up of 
uh, how many constituents? So right. a, a man may be able to ejaculate, but there are no sperm cells in the, in the ejaculate. The basic thing for the man is to have a semen analysis done before he can conclude that he is okay. Do you find a reluctance on the part of men to come forward? Yes, and I think it's because of society's expectation. It boils down to the stigma too. Most men don't consider themselves men if they're unable to get their wives pregnant. Right. And so the women usually seek help because uh, society puts a lot of pressure on the woman. Mm -hmm. Everybody looks at the woman first. But now, research has shown increasingly that um, male factor is becoming more and more important yeah. in the, as, as the cause of infertility in a couple. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't just focus on the man. Mm -hmm. You must see them as a couple and yeah. investigate them as a couple mm -hmm. and then make your diagnosis. And um, prescribe the appropriate um, treatment. With those miracle baby factories we hear about, one fact keeps coming up. Um, the fact that they tell these allegedly pregnant women that the babies won't show on the scan. Is there any time that, you know, a woman who is pregnant will do a scan and the baby won't show? There's nothing like that. The baby can hide somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just wondering. No. It, so no. it's not possible that no, it's you not do a possible. scan and you will not see the baby? Yes, yeah, it's not possible. So. Can a woman with blocked tubes still get pregnant? Yes, but through um, in vitro fertilization. Right, that's the IVF. Okay, that's so through IVF. Th yes, let's talk can. about the, the methods of treating infertility. I've got IVF, which is your specialty. I've got intracytoplastic sperm, ICSI injection, um, intrauterine insemination, IUI, testicular sperm aspiration, TESA, and laparoscopy. All the babies that will be born through these methods, will they be normal? Yes, the first um, IVF yeah. baby, um, normal she's been able to um, carry her own pregnancy which right. was a natural pregnancy and giving birth so in retrospect um, conventional IVF we've been able to follow our hope and see mm -hmm. that okay and there's nothing wrong with babies born through the conventional IVF. now for ICSI yes. which is intracytoplasmic sperm injection right a single sperm is injected into the head right during the process of is a type is a type of in vitro fertilization in, in the lab for, yes in the lab for men for male factor infertility really right. that's what um ICSI treats so far there's no um abnormality in those children that is n not um commensurate with what you find in children who are conceived through natu um, natural means mm. uh, but they are still teenagers now so until they reproduce to them we can be sure but so far mm. they're, they're nothing. nothing you know because just you know as a layman thinking that you've extracted a sperm and you are forcing it into the egg <laughs> yeah, in injecting, the lab, it. <laughs> <laughs> injecting it yes. how do we know that something didn't drop off the sperm like the hand or no, no, no. no nothing like no. that there is a special machine called the ICSI machine that helps you um, do what we call the micro manipulation and the IUI intrauterine insemination what's that is one of the simplest form of assisted um, um, conception is used really when the man has um, what we call borderline sperm parameters, mm -hmm. um, a mild um, low sperm count. That is, the sperm count is not normal, but it's still borderline. So it's used to help the woman um, get pregnant, even though the um, sperm parameters are just mildly um, abnormal. Mm -hmm. In other words, the sperm of the husband is, 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 is put in, into the uterus yeah. of, of the woman yes. why the sperm is lazy <laughs> no they count okay they, yes. they're not enough they're not enough in number that's okay. when you do that okay so there is a criteria for for that so the count cannot be below 
a certain number, it won't, right. it won't be appropriate. The woman's age comes mm. into it, the tubes must be open. We'll still talk about infertility when we come back from this break. So join us again after the break. I don't think there's somebody in this, in this Nigeria who can give you that kind of a prediction that this is any part of Nigeria can enjoy four, five, eight hours of power. Because there are so many challenges in putting up power plants. It's not just the plant, but you also have the fuel to drive the plant. Sometimes gas, and these are not dependent on you. So if you go and boast and say, in the next one year, I'm going to give you people their time, or every person in my state, 18, 24 hours. That is politics, because it may not happen. The gas we are hoping to use, you know, it might not be there. So we have a lot of these challenges that we are dealing with. Welcome back. My concluding moments now with Dr. Omotayo Oluede. Still on children born through IVF. Do they have human feelings? <laughs> Someone said that, asked ask me that question. They do. They do. They do. They're just like <laughs> every normal child. Can a woman who has experienced infertility for about 25 years, can she still have a child? Yes, it is possible. So as long as she has the womb intact. Women who have had hysterectomy, that is had their womb removed, cannot have um, a baby. baby through, unless they use a surrogate. After 25 years of infertility, if you still have eggs, they will use your eggs? Yeah. And, and use any of the other methods? Yes. Okay. With infertility treatment, is it certain that one will get pregnant? What infertility treatment does is to improve the chance of getting pregnant. In in vitro fertilization, usually older women, one above 40, the success rate is, is reduced. Such women, to increase their chances of getting pregnant, are advised to use donated eggs, usually from a younger woman. The issue of surrogacy comes in too, if the woman has had her womb removed. In extreme cases really most yes. people can be helped mm -hmm. by coming forward to seek her. If a woman is not ovulating, can she still get pregnant? Yes, she can get pregnant by help, giving her drugs to help her um, to ovulate. If a woman is not ovulating, what is the reason why she's not ovulating? Is it age? I see her children menopause. Yeah. Uh, those women will benefit from donated um, eggs mm. but if she's still within the reproductive age group she's yes. young is it the, the commonest um, condition that will cause this is what we call them um, polycystic um, ovarian syndrome or polycystic ovarian disease which um, she can be giving um, ovulation inducing drugs and she may be able to achieve pregnancy what causes polycystic ovarian disease? Really, the cause is not uh, no. known, but mm. these women tend to have so many eggs in the ovaries, but they are arrested in their development. Mm. They do not release these eggs. Right. They may have other uh, medical conditions that need to be treated right. for them to be able to achieve um, pregnancy. Okay, so the fact that you are not ovulating doesn't mean you don't have eggs inside you. It doesn't mean that you don't have eggs. Are blocked tubes very common in this part of the world? Yes, it is. Why do you think that is? It has to do with the poor health, um, health care seeking uh, habits of our people. Um, women acquire these infections that go untreated or poorly treated. And yeah. that may result in blocked tubes. That's usually, it's usually an infectious, infectious cause. Yes. That's what is commonest. And it's one of the leading causes of infertility in our environment. In women? Yes, in women. When you say infections, infections in the vagina? Sexually, yes, sexually sexual transmitted trauma. infections. What kind of diseases will, will go in there and block the tubes? Well, if a woman acquires gonorrhea, chlamydia, those are the two commonest oh. causes of um, blocked um, tubes. How will you know you have these kind of infections? I mean, is, will you know you have chlamydia or, or gonorrhea? If a woman has any discharge that is not normal, she should seek uh, medical what, what do you mean not normal? If she has a discharge that is maybe smelly, 
because women do have discharge normally that is heavier than usual enough to wet the underpants. Right. You might want to investigate it. The normal vagina discharge is usually not um, malodorous. Yes, not and offensive. It's not, not offensive. And really, there are some times that the woman really doesn't know. So if a woman has multiple sexual partners, really, she needs to see a gynecologist and also practice safer sex by mm -hmm. using um, condom. Because sometimes a woman doesn't really know the infection is there. She may not have a discharge and mm -hmm. she does have the infection mm -hmm. and it may go on to cause um, tuber problems. There are infections that women will carry around, it won't manifest, yes. but they will be there. Yes. And when you say improperly treated or incompletely treated, what do you mean? It's not by going to a chemist and trying to describe yeah, what you think is wrong with you. Yes, people do that a lot and mm. they, no proper diagnosis is made and so they just use whatever. The organism may not be sensitive to the antibiotic you are taking, so it's a waste of time. If you are watching this and you think you are having issues, you should see a real doctor, yes. not necessarily a gynecologist? Or yes, a general practitioner. They are trained to be able to treat this kind of thing. I've read that a woman ovulates about 300 times in her lifetime. Is that what they mean by a biological clock ticking? Yes. <laughs> Really, you, the, we are born with a limited number of eggs and um, every time a woman ovulates really, it's yeah. not that only one egg she recruits, but she recruits quite a number. Right. Only one gets released at ovulation, the rest just die off. As time goes by, mm. you are actually depleting your, your egg supply. Your eggs, yes. And the egg supply ends when menopause Yes, when the number of uh, eggs in the ovaries has reduced, mm. you know, to a critical value, yes. the um, body's ability to produce the hormones that make us women, the ovaries, um, start winding down, mm. really. Mm. And so you have less and less of those, of the hormones being produced, and that is really what is responsible for the symptoms that occur during the perimenopausal years right. before menopause finally happens. So you say those hormones that make us women. women. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Are you saying when women go into menopause they become like men? No, not really. <laughs> but um, that hormone estrogen is responsible for our appearance as women. Um, is responsible for a, a lot of things. Women may start experiencing physical changes. For example, the skin may not be as supple as when they are younger. Okay. When they were younger, they may experience the dryness of the skin. Is as a result of the withdrawal of this hormone. In the genital area, you may have a loss of um, elasticity, so the woman may have problems during intercourse, having painful intercourse. She may have trouble holding urine. Wow. Wow. So, the, so it, it can be that, um, that extensive, these changes that mm. women uh, go through. Some of them do disappear once they have gone through the transition, like the hot flushes, but some of them will continue uh, long after you have achieved menopause. Change in breasts, mm. you know, size. Um, but it will reduce. <laughs> it's not <laughs> going to be like when you... you okay, you won't be yes. voluptuous anymore. Yeah, yes. That voluptuousness goes. Yes. Can one still get pregnant even if they have what you call unexplained infertility? Yes. Because what unexplained infertility means is that there is no known cause for the mm. infertility in the couple you've um, investigated both of them and you've not found any cause really. Yes. So they can benefit from assisted conception right. techniques. Yeah. Provided they have sperm and they have eggs. Yes. They do, it's just that they are not getting pregnant. What okay. we mean by unexplained, yes. that is the woman 
everything not, is intact. Everything is intact, and yet they are unable to achieve pregnancy together as a couple. Mm. So they they should um, they will benefit from assisted um, conception techniques. So it's not an excuse that the reason they are not getting pregnant is their spirit don't go with each other. No, no. <laughs> Nothing like that. Nothing like that. The inner lining of the womb becoming hostile to fetal implantation. What does that mean? If you and I agree that the whole aim of the woman's uterus is to carry a baby and the baby now gets there, why will that place be hostile to the fetus? Some people have what we call autoimmune disease. They produce these antibodies that attack the um, fetus. Right. Um, in natural pregnancy, um, the fetus really is a foreign body because it's the egg of the woman mm -hmm. and the sperm of the man that forms the baby. Right. But nature has a way of protecting the baby from the woman's immune system. Mm -hmm. Some women are unable to um, produce what we call blocking antibodies to make the body accept the baby, which is really foreign yes. to the body. So some women are unable to mount that response. So they produce antibodies that attack the, the, the fetus. And what would you do to... to they can be treated. They will right. be given drugs to help their body um, and allow them to carry their pregnancy. Will they be given the medication before the pregnancy or when the pregnancy is there already? Depending on um, when you, you can start at any time. And is menopause tied into high blood pressure? Is it true that menopausal women do tend to have high blood pressure? In some women, not mm. all, um, that's the time that they do develop um, heart disease. Right. Yes. Um, some research has shown that the hormone that makes us women, yes. estrogen, has a protective effect on the cardiovascular system and that mm -hmm. on the withdrawal of this hormone, yes. which is what happens during menopause, that the risk of cardiovascular disease in women goes up. But it doesn't occur in all, all women. But so the woman needs to, I mean, everybody needs mm -hmm. to check their blood pressure really. Mm -hmm. But for some women, a small group of women, yes. it coincides with this um, period of their life. So what lifestyle changes would you advise to women who are going towards menopause, either perimenopausal or in full menopause now? Yes, they should take their health seriously. You may want to start with diet. Um, you want to reduce your salt intake. If you can avoid sugar altogether, mm -hmm. better. You want to do um, exercise to keep your bones strong. You want to take supplements, make sure you are eating right, um, less of carbohydrates, more of fiber. When you say less of carbohydrates, a bag, bread, and <laughs> <laughs> less of that, really more fiber in mm -hmm. your food, more fruits, vegetables. Mm -hmm. And um, you may want to take supplements, like calcium supplements, you know, vitamin D supplements, because your risk for cancer goes up with age, you should have a, a mammogram done. Um, what about the pap smear? When yes, you're very, in fact, a woman should have a pap smear throughout um, uh, her reproductive years. Throughout, once a woman is sexually active, mm. she should have a pap smear. So, but done. when you are in menopause, is there any point doing a pap smear? Well, so yeah, because um, there is a point, but. If you've had normal pap smears, after a while you can stop screening, maybe at age um, 65 and okay. all. Okay. You can, if you've had normal pap smears all along. Mm. Mm. Why are you more susceptible to cancer, you know, in menopause? Well, in old age really, whether okay. you're a man or woman, the ability to repair damaged genes, damaged DNA, reduces with age. So the body is unable to do I mean, this repair. Mm -hmm. So you now have abnormal um, DNA mm -hmm. 
which is what directs you know um, the activities in the cell so you can have um, abnormalities that may go on to develop into 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 cancer mm -hmm. there are certain genes in our body that help to control this process yes. uh, of cell division if the body is unable to repair this damage you mean the man although it's not really as simple as that all right and uh, finally is it possible that every woman will have a child no it's not it's not yeah. some women um, just can't get pregnant but it's a small group when you say just can't get pregnant can they get pregnant on somebody's egg with a donation yes but some can't carry pregnancy, pregnancy. It's either the lining of the womb is totally destroyed mm -hmm. or they have medical conditions that will make it unsafe for them to carry pregnancy. Such as? Well, if they have um, kidney disease, such women, or very severe hypertension, such women are advised not to because it may worsen their condition. Right. So surrogacy is an alternative. With surrogacy, can the child bring some funny things that both parents didn't have because not the mother that carried the child no no no, no. there's surrogacy in which you use the egg of the woman okay who is going to carry the pregnancy and there's one in which no no i mean the gamete is from the couple mm -hmm. she just helps them to carry, to carry the, it the, incubates the it for yeah, them yes so so no no nothing nothing like, like that nothing so like if that. i mean if the if the egg and the sperm from the man and the woman yeah. is just going to be incubated by this third person can the fetus acquire some of the traits of this third person no no not at all not at all i think you've educated <laughs> us enough today Thank you very much for coming on Six Minutes with Thank me, you Dr. For, Baby. Thank you for having me. Well, that's it for this week. Don't forget to like 60 Minutes with Angela on Facebook. Alternatively, follow me on Twitter, Angela at 60 Minutes. Or join me same time, same day, same station. You never know who I'll be spending 60 Minutes with. I'm Angela Jitomobi. I thank you for the pleasure of being here.